Hey everybody, I'm at Mountwood Park. It's about two o'clock, 75 degrees, beginning of fall, and this is a good time of the year for salamanders. So I'm gonna try to show you how to find salamanders and how to identify them. There's no guarantee I'll actually find anything, but I'll show you some tips and some do's and don'ts for how to look for salamanders safely and how to make sure you don't cause any damage. There's some good bird action today. I've already seen a couple black-throated green warblers and uh, scarlet tanager, but that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm gonna see if I can find any salamanders for you and show you what they are. You can see the creek bed is pretty low. Normally I'd be underwater right now. So this isn't ideal for salamanders, but sometimes it's better for looking for salamanders because if there's not that much water, they could be clustered in the areas that actually are underwater. I've taken a lot of field trips here, taken students here off and on for three years, uh, four years maybe, and we found at least seven or eight different species here. And I know there's more that we haven't found. So that's a pretty good number for around here. Up in the mountains, there's a lot more diversity, but for just mainly looking around one stream or maybe two, finding that number of species is pretty good. Salamanders are generally not going to be out in the open. You're going to have to lift things up to look for them. So I like to lift up rocks, logs, piles of dead leaves, anything that you think they could be under. But if you're going to lift something up, you always need to put it back exactly how it was especially if it's a rock or a log and it's laying in a certain position. There could be some salamanders in the water. I've had luck with that. But what I like to do usually is lift up rocks that are near the water, but maybe not quite underwater. Kind of like this one. Just see if anybody's home and then put it right back down the way it was. If you think a rock is too big for a salamander to be under, it's still worth checking because there could be holes or tunnels or something underneath where it got under there somehow. But if it's so big that you don't think you can put it back in the position it was, then just don't lift it up. I never lift up rocks that are embedded in the bottom of the creek because not only does that contribute to sediment flowing down the creek, but also it's the home of all kinds of little macroinvertebrates that you can't see. And even if there is a salamander under there, it creates a big cloud of mud and you're not gonna see it anyway. So I just lift up rocks that are on top of other rocks or that aren't in the bottom of the creek at all. I've been here for 20 minutes. I did find one larval salamander that I couldn't record because of glare from the sun. And I found one adult salamander that was just too fast and got away. Most rocks won't have any salamanders underneath them. You might flip a hundred rocks and find one salamander, but it's that 1% that makes the whole day worth it. This caterpillar just fell out of a tree. Not one that you want to touch. Here's a larval salamander underwater. Probably a juvenile two-lined. It either just lost its gills or has little tiny remnants of gills, but it's, it's not that far from being grown up. There's another one of the same thing. I found probably 10 of these so far. All of them in the water. I'm hoping to find some adult salamanders that aren't in the water to be able to show you. But these are still cool. There it is. This isn't a salamander, but somebody was home under this rock. Nice looking millipede. You can also hear some angry Carolina wrens around me. I just found a juvenile red salamander, but it was in the water and it got away. They're really slick and have a lot of hiding places and are hard to find. So you'll just have to take my word for it. So the count so far is probably eight larval two lines so far, one dusky and one juvenile red. These are more Carolina wren noises. They're probably the loudest birds around. It's hard to say what they're talking about at any given time. They, they seem to talk all the time. 
Very interesting, cool little brown birds, white eye stripe. But if you hear a really loud bird drowning out everything else, probably a Carolina wren. Okay, I lifted up a rock and we have our first actual adult salamander. This is a dusky, northern dusky. It's the most common salamander in this park. It seems like uh, maybe 75% of all salamanders we find here are duskies, but it's still cool every single time I see one. So that one's trying to hide in between the fold of that leaf. You can see how its tail kind of has a little zigzag pattern almost. Most of these are, I see around here are either brown or yellow, just kind of a, a dull pattern. But this one was underneath the rock, and I'll let it go back where it was. Picked up the leaf so you can get a better view of it. It's just kind of wrapped up like a burrito right now. But it's not running away. Some of them run away. Others just stay still. You don't really know. Uh, one thing to remember is, I, since it was actually under a rock, I don't just want to lay the rock back down. I want to either sit the salamander somewhere else or uh, off to the side somewhere before I put the rock back so that you don't smash the salamander. Here's another larval salamander that I found, probably number 20 on the day. Pretty sure it's a two line. Here's another adult dusky. This one was also under a rock. You can see it's a little bit more brightly colored than the other one, but overall looks the same. Kind of, kind of a broken line down both sides of its back, becoming more zigzaggy at the end. So I will make it run away so that I can put its rock right back in the way that it was found. You can see this creek bed is completely dry. But I still found a dusky salamander under a rock. Looks pretty much like the others. I've had pretty good luck so far for just doing this by myself, but I didn't get very many of them on video, so I'm gonna try a couple more spots in the park and see if I have any better luck. Here's another dusky. This one was under this log. There it is. Yet another dusky. Hoping I can find some more diversity here, but I'm not complaining. Dusky. Northern Dusky. You can see the zigzag on its tail. There it goes. This one was under a rock. Here's another Dusky. This one's a little bit smaller. All these past Duskies have been within a two minute span. So I found a pretty good spot. I'm in a creek bed, mostly dry, you can see, but it's kind of in a valley. A lot of dead leaves, broken logs. Just a lot of places to hide. This one looks a little bit different. It's definitely bigger and fatter, but it's still a dusky. Here's another, more of the same. I'm not recording every single one I see. I think you all get the point. There are a lot of dusky salamanders here. I'm gonna go try one more spot in the park, which is known to have a pretty high density in salamanders. If it would have rained at all lately, like even quarter inch this would have been a lot better today but that's just how it goes sometimes there is some skill to finding these knowing where to look but it's also luck in a large part so i know some days are better than others not sure what exactly this is but it's really big not want to be seen there it is an adult two-lined salamander See it run away. I've chased this thing for a long time. They just disappear. Well, you did get a good look at it. So that's the second adult species I've been able to show you. See this hillside covered in dead leaves, rocks, rotten wood near a stream. There are probably salamanders everywhere here. It's just a matter of where you look and how much luck you have. There's a nice big pile of wood from a tree they've cut up. And under one of the logs is 
another two line salamander. Bright yellow, two lines down its back. You can see how it got its name. Sometimes they're dull yellow, almost brown, but they've got the stripes. And there's a millipede friend. Here you can see the wild beer can. Somebody who had no respect for their surroundings. Here's another dusky and one of the only wet spots in the creek. And the rock right before this was a double flip. Two salamanders under one rock, but they both got away. Try to get it to move a little bit. Put the rock back down. And a really good part of the park. You can see there's a lot more water here than in the other spot, even though it's still pretty dry. And I found salamanders almost under every rock here. So here's another dusky. And it looks like it has an injured leg, you see? Not working very well. But it's definitely alive. I'll see if I can move it a little bit. Yeah, there it goes. It looks fine. They can regrow their legs. There's a dusky under this really big rock. There it is. Well, that'll have to be it for today. I actually found a whole lot of salamanders considering how dry it is out and the fact that I'm by myself. So I wish I could have found more total species. I only showed you two and saw three. I've seen as many as seven or eight here before, but it wasn't bad. I hope you get the point. I wanted you to see what kind of habitats they like, how to pick up the rock and put it back safely, checking logs, bark, things like that how to move the salamander, and just what they look like. So I hope you learned something, and if I ever find more, I will definitely show you.